Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to our cosy little corner of the internet. I'm Penn and today I'll be reading the, uh, a new fic called Turning Tide by Pretty Bean. Uh, this is a Bingo Stray Dogs fic and I absolutely love it. I'm not all the way through, literally only up to chapter 4 of 13 chapters. But I really like this fic so far so I went right ahead and asked for permission after reading the first two chapters. And this fic is phenomenal guys, just... It's a little over, it's almost 29,000 words with 13 chapters. Uh, here is a summary if you're interested in, in this fic. Recently, the Port Mafia has been very silent. The armed detective agency is worried that they're plotting something, but what happens when it's something that they have ne they never imagined? Now, this is amazing, and I'll probably be reading the first two chapters in this video, just to give you a little bit of a booster because I don't know how long each chapter is going to be. I'm guessing it's going to be like 8 minutes long per chapter and I want to try to do a little bit longer videos than that so anyway let's get right in and I hope you guys enjoy this fic. Chapter 1 The Letter The armed detective agency has been keeping an eye out open for the Port Mafia. The organisation of the night has, been, has long been quiet. Even the president is worried about what they might be conspiring. Okay, no, I cannot do this anymore, Yosuno said, standing up from her desk. The Port Mafia has been quiet for almost a month at this point, and it's there, there's something extremely suspicious about this. She crosses her arms, at staring at the others. Yosuno's got a point. Something's wrong. Tanazaki says, agreeing with the woman. It's the Port Mafia. Who knows what they're doing? Plus, it's not much like it's not. There's not much we could do in the f about it. There's not much we could do about it, anyways. Kyoka says, shrugging her shoulders. You can't. You can't deny that it isn't suspicious, though. Kunikita said, putting a finger to his chin, thinking. They go back and forward, discussing about what might be going on. The only two people sank out of this conversation being Rumpo and Darzai. Darzai knew something was wrong weeks ago. He he had many tabs on the Port Mafia. Mostly the mess with Chuya, and even those have been inactive. Darzai also knew Chuya hadn't returned home at once in the past month. Darzai hadn't broken, had, having broken into his apartment more than once, leaving coded letters for Chuya before, for Chuya never being, being, leaving coded, leaving coded letters for Chuya, never being taken the next time he decides to stop by. Well, he. While he didn't know what was wrong, he knew something was, and he had a feeling it had to all do with him. Pulling Darzai out from his thoughts, Rompo speaks out, causing almost everyone to become causing everyone to become silent. I'm very sure we'll find out find out what they're up to soon, he says, a not very pleased appearance on his face. The next day, the armed detective agency was on high alert due to Rompo's potential warning. But did it as but the detectives never expected what was going to happen. While well, everyone, well, almost everyone, was working, there was a knock on the door. Kenji stood up excited, assuming it was a assuming it to be a client. Client, I'll get it, he said cheerfully, making his way towards the door. He opened it and exaggerate. He opened the ex he opened excitedly, replying. Welcome to the armed detective agency. How can we help you? Only after he finished speaking did he realise who was at the door. Hello, we have a letter to deliver. One of the people at the door said, coughing. The other quickly gave the letter to Kenji. The letter is to be delivered to your president. The other, the other said, more quietly than the first. Atsushi peeked his head around the corner to see who was there, but it seemed Kunikido had already jumped into action. I see. Thank you. May I ask what the, con the contents of this letter is, Port Mafia? He said, taking the letter from Kenji. We're unaware of its contents for now. If, you, if un We're unaware of its contents, contents. Now, if you will excuse, we have some work. Come on, Gein. Octagawa says, walking away from the door of the agency, Gein following behind. Octagawa is delivering... Octa the Octagawa is delivering a letter, huh? Does I said... Towards the, the towards the door sill, said looking towards the door sill. I'll take the I'll take the letter, Kinkita. I'll take it straight up to the president. Frompo said, jumping down from, 
and taking it from Kuniki Ida, walking, bo- away, walking away before he had time to protest. As soon as Rompo passed the corner to the president's office, for once he put on a serious face. President, he calls out, a letter. Rompo walks into the loo- room, setting the letter down on the president's desk. Ah, thank you, Rompo. And who might this be from? He asks, looking up at Rompo. The Mafia, Rompo Rampo says, gesturing for the president to open the letter already. Fukuzawa l- opens the letter hesitantly. First thing, the first thing he notices about the letter is that it's not in the same ones. That it's, it's not similar to the ones he's received in the past. The handwriting being different from Mori, being different from the one Mori usually wrote with. Fukuzawa began to read the letter. Hello. Apologies for the suddenness of this letter. But we have important matters to discuss, do we not, President? The Mafia would like to ask the armed detective agency if they would like to join us in an alliance. What we might, what might we get out of this? I'm sure you'll find out soon, will you not? Signed, the Port Mafia boss. Fukuzawa let, let out a sigh. Looks like we're scheduling a meeting with the Mafia, he said looking up at Rampo, who was still in the room. Was there anything strange about the letter? I don't trust whatever the Mafia is doing. Rampo says, for once, not being able to pinpoint exactly what the Mafia was trying to do. The handwriting is definitely not Maury's. It has a similar writing style, but his greeting and signature were, were also unlike him. Fukuzawa said, letting out another sigh. Well, might as well inform the others. It would be improper to, it would be improper to agree to an alliance without their input, correct? He starts to walk out of the door walk out of the office door with Rumpo following behind him. As soon as Fukuzawa enters the main part of the agency, he is quickly noticed. President, Kunikita says, bearing at the president. Hello, if you could all listen up, he says, getting straight to business. As you know, the Mafia dropped a letter off not too long ago. I'm sure you all, I'm sure you're all curious about the content, curious about, I'm sure you're all curious about the content. After a pause, he continued, The Mafia suggested an, an alliance between the two of us. For what reason, I cannot say I'm sure, but des- I decided that I would ask you for your opinion on the matter. Does I think this is unusual? Mont- Mori wanting an alliance? Never. Seems as if he's not the only one who's thinking this way. The Mafia wanting an alliance with us? Yeah, no, this is fishy as hell. Yosuno says, crossing her arms. Maybe they turned a leaf? Tanazaki shrugs. Is Mori Tanazaki? Yosuno says, looking at him, looking at him with a slight glare. Yeah, yeah, you're right. He says, looking away, kind of embarrassed that he suggested that in the first place. I believe it's not Mori who we're dealing with. Rampo says, joining the conversation. What makes What makes you say that, Rampo san Atsushi asks, tilting his head in confusion. The handwriting, it's not Mori. And before you ask, every other time he's, every other letter he's ever sent has always been the same as the one, same, has been the same hands as, wow, okay, English. And before you ask, every other letter he has ever sent has been the same hands before this one. He says, adding to the confusion of the room. Why wouldn't Mori write, write his own letter? And what if it's not Mori who and if if it's not Mori who's writing it, then who is? On top of what Rumpo says, the signature the greeting and signature does also look quite unusual from what he usually does, Fukuzawa adds. Does I nods. Would I, would you mind if I take a look at this letter, President? He asks with a smile on his face. Go ahead. The president hands the letter to Dazai. It doesn't take him long to know to know who wrote this. There was only one person who he knew who wrote like this, but even after knowing who wrote it, it only led to more questions. Why did he write it? Did something happen to Mori? Does I san? Kyoka uh, says, standing next to him, gesturing to him to show her the letter. Huh? It's Chuyani's handwriting, right? She says, looking over to Daza with confusion written on her face. Is Chuya's the gravity manipulator, right? Yosuno says, wanting to double check herself. Yup. Dazai says, popping the pee, sounding kind of annoyed. But why? Kyoka asks, looking up at Dazai. Do, you don't think... 
Tarzai shakes his head. Ha, huh, no, true could never. His loyalty is too deep for that. Mori probably was just too busy with Elise to fight it himself. Gross. He says, handing the letter back to Fugazawa. Where do you think, Rompo? Darzai says, turning towards Rompo's desk. Rompo had, wa had walked back to his desk full of snacks. Eh? Wh what do I think? Eh, it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll find out everything at the meeting wh anyways, won't we? He says, being, uh, being uninterested in all of this. So we're having the meeting? Atsushi asks, asks very confused about what's going on at the moment. Seems like it. If <sighs> seems like it. If it's what Rumpo s says to do, then why shouldn't we? Kenji says with a smile on his face. I suppose we can at least find out what they want in this in light in an alliance. Yosuno says, a hand on her hip. All right. Now that we're all on the same page, I'm going to return to my office. Continue with your work. Fukuzawa says, walking back to his office, informing Haruno to schedule the meeting on the way back. Darzai ever, so slides, Darzai ever so slightly slides down his chair. What is Mori playing at? What could he possibly be planning? For once, the man had managed to stump him. Okay, that was chapter one of Turning Tide. Uh, I'll be moving on to chapter two now because that was a little bit too short to be a video by itself. Uh, I hope you guys like this. This is chapter two, The Meeting. The armed detective agency in the Port Mafia decide to hold a meeting one week later. It's a pretty gloomy day, but the agency is determined to figure out what's going on. The president decides to only bring a few members to the meeting, including himself, Rampo, Dazai, and Atsushi. Deciding that it would be better to keep a smaller number at the meeting. However, it, that doesn't mean that the others weren't ready to help at a moment's notice. I can't believe we're on this watch duty or whatever they're calling this. Yosuno says as she want as as she wanted to see what Mori was playing at with all of this. We should trust the judgment of the president as well as Rompo. If they have decided that only a few of us should go, then so be it. We we should just f focus on doing our job. Kunikita said, ready to do whatever was needed. Yeah, I suppose you're right, she says, cro arms crossed, looking away. Hmm? Kyoka? Is everything okay? Kenji said, going up to the girl. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, just a bit worried is all, she says, looking towards Kenji. Kenji steps closer to her and grabs her onto her hands. Don't worry, they know what they're doing. No, no one will get hurt. Kenji exclaims and smiles at her. Her nerves being calmed slightly, she smiles right back at him. The time for the long, the time for the long-awaited meeting finally came. The two organizations decided to meet at, at an unpopular park in Yokohama, only being unpopulated due to the extent of the mafia's business in the area. Are you sure I have to be here for this meeting? Uh, so she asked, unsure of what help he could bring to the over and being overall stressed about the meeting. Yes, you have to be here, Atsushi. Sorry, but there's no getting out of this one. Darzai said, giving a grin to him. I thank you for agreeing to come along, even though I can tell you your discomfort. The president spoke with a slight, with a sm slight, with a light smile on his face, quickly dropping down as he saw the mafia approach. Darzai scanned the faces of those approaching. According to what Rumpo said, there should be four, four of them in total. Hence their decision to bring three other agency members. As he looked through the faces, he, there were ones he, there were the ones he expected: Octagawa, Koyo, and Chuya. But who does I didn't expect was Valerine. Valerine stood stood directly next to Chuya, while Koyo and and Octagawa trailed a bit behind. To see Val Valerine in public was sure, sure was a sight. Atsushi, standing close to Dazai, whispered to him, Where's Mori? Bewilderment, bewildered that he wasn't present. Had something in Rampo's calculations gone wrong? Dazai just replied by, by giving a small smile to Atsushi, one that Atsushi had seen multiple times before. He could trust Dazai and he could trust tr Dazai and knew that everything would go the way they wanted. Hello, Chia spoke, surprisingly soft for for his un surprisingly soft for his usual tone of voice. 
Thank you for accepting the, our letter, he continued, gaining a bit more confidence in his voice. Daza internally almost panicked. Trio was taking initiative in this meeting, something something he never did unless forced, and around his neck? No, Daza thought he must be losing it. Of course, Fukuzawa spoke. However, I was aware and unaware that Mori would not be here. Before Chiyo could speak, Koyo, Koyo's voice rose. Ah, unfortunately Mori has passed away, but we have been handling things very well. Mori was gone. The agency and president were... The agency members present were a bit startled, even if they didn't show it. Oh, so is that why you've been so quiet? Rampo says, with a cheekiness in his voice. Rampo, the president warned. My apologies. Apologies, my condolences. If we want an alliance, I feel to need to know who the boss title is held by now. He said, looking towards Chia since looking back towards Chia since he started the conversation. Yes, you have a right to know, he paused. The title of Mafia bo- Port Mafia Boss has been taken by me. He reached out his hand. Ch- Nakahara Chuya, boss of the Port Mafia. Fukuzawa shook his, ha- shook, uh, took his hand and shook it. Fukuzawa Yurichi, president of the Armed Detective Agency. It's a pleasure to meet the new boss. Chia nodded. Very much a pleasure. Now to business, I suppose? Do you have any questions about our alliance? He asks, even though he didn't show it on his face, that as I could tell in his movement and speech, Chia didn't want to be here. Something was extremely wrong. Straight to the point, I see. Yes, I did have some questions. What is the purpose of this alliance? Fukuzawa asks quite calmly. The purpose? Well, I hope to be able to get... I hope... Well, we hope to be able to get your help with the turn of a new boss. As far as I'm aware, the agency wasn't around when Moro rose to position, but I'm sure as, I'm sure you heard and saw what, what it was like. He paused. Of course, this has a great benefit to you too. Not only will the night become this has a benefit to you too. Not only will the night become unstable, but so will the dawn and dusk. It would be in in your best interest to keep everything peaceful, correct? Chia finished, looking towards the president, determined to get him to agree. Dazai was observing the conversation, and something, and he couldn't help but think, what had happened to Chuya? Him having a conversation like this? Never. What did Mori do? Rampo looked towards the president for to, for approval to speak. Once he got approval, once he got said approval, he spoke. So you want us to make an alliance to keep your own asses safe? And what makes you think we'll agree to that? Sure, we want to keep peace, but who'd say it would affect us? He finishes, smirking at Chuya in respo- waiting for his response. He takes a breath. Why would you agree? Yes, it seems you. Ha- it doesn't seem like you get much from this. I'm not sure if you've heard. I'm not sure if you've heard, but rumors. There's rumors around a certain group, building their numbers with plans to attack Yokohama. He held a slight smile on his face. Hmm. Fine, President. I think we can go ahead with this alli- Go ahead and have an alliance with them. It's not. It doesn't matter too much if we do or not. Rampo says, shrugging and looking towards the president. Dazai, Atsushi, any comments? The president says, turning towards the other, to the other two boys. Atsushi shakes his head, looking a bit stressed about all of this. Dazai moves his eyes from the president to, from the president to Akutagawa, knowing he's the only one he's likely to get an answer out of. Akutagawa, he starts. Akutagawa turns his head to towards Zazai. You wouldn't know you wouldn't happen to know more of what happened to Mori, would you? He asked, a grin on his face. Zazai said, I he starts before being cut off by Chuya. Sorry, Zazai, but we have a tight schedule and I don't feel it's as though this that this is important, no? He says, looking towards Zazai with a slight frown. My apologies, Ju- Chuya san Otagawa says, looking away from Zazai. It is quite alright, Chuya. It's quite, it's quite right, Octagawa. Jeez, Chia says, turning to smile, turning to smile towards Octagawa before turning back towards the president. So, what do you say? He asked with a small smile towards Fukuzawa. Hmm. Well, it seems that an alliance could do us all good, could it not? 
And if Rumpo as well as Atsushi and Dazai seem fine with him, I have no reason to decline. He says, showing a slight smile back to Chuya. Chuya claps his hands together. Great. Would you like to have this in written form? I can send it... I can send the Octic Hours by again. Ah, that would be lovely. Thank you. Figures out pauses. Well, I'm sure you're extremely busy, and I believe our meeting is at its conclusion, yes? For the first time, Valoin speaks up. Yes, that would be all. That would be all. Now, if you excuse us, we shall be off. Valoin says with a small, with a smile to the president, along with a slight nod. Fukuzawa nods back. With the confirmation of the meeting being over, Koya and Octagawa step further to the side, allowing Valoin and Chuya between them. Once they step past, Koya and Octagawa turn to follow them. Before they get too far out of sight. Chuya notices the movement of Chuya's hand, grabbing onto Valerie and squeezing it. Vampo t- turns to the group the second he saw the Port Mafia is out of earshot. I know I said we can agree to this alliance, which, yes, I'm on board for, but you can't deny that something's wrong here. Mr. Fancy Hat's not acting the way he did any other time we've interacted. Vampo says, a hand on hands on his hips, looking at the others. I agree with Vampo. Chuya doesn't act like this. Does I said. Plus, Maurice un- randomly passing away? Not likely. Looking towards Rumpo in an attempt to, si- to see a glimpse of an idea of a solution. Plus, Octagawa. L- Plus, Octagawa listened to Nakahawa sound when Does I said asked him a question. Atsushi said, looking l- looking slightly over with a s- slightly over to th- over to the side. We can discuss this with the group when we return to the agency. Let's return. Fukuzawa says, starting to walk out of the park, the other three following behind. The four Port Mafia members return to the building. Boss, the guard knelt down and as he walked by, Shu just took a breath, continuing to walk by. As they reached the main part of the first floor, Shu turned to Koya and Octagawa. You two are dismissed. Thank you for coming along with the meeting to me. Along with, along to the meeting. Chia smiles at his two friends. Of course, Chia said. Octagawa says, bowing and walking away. Remember, lad. If there's anything you, ne- if you need, ever need anything, we're here for you. Okay? She says, smiling at Chia. The a look of sadness in her eyes when Chia nodded back, nodded and nodded back to. And back to s- at her to see her turn on her heels and leave. Shuya took a deep breath, turning towards Valorin. Shall we head up? He said, looking at him. Yeah, let's go, Valorin said, walking with Shuya towards the elevator that led to the top floor of the Port Mafia building. Shuya and Valorin stood off the elevator towards on the top floor. The guards on the floor turned towards them, kneeling as they walked by. Valoin opened the door, allowing Chuya to step into the office. Valoin put an arm onto Chuya's shoulder once they entered the room and the door behind them was closed. You did good today, Chuya, even with him being there, Valoin said, smiling at Chuya. Yeah, it went pretty well, didn't it? Chuya said, looking up from Valoin, his eyes asking for a quick hug, for, quick hug from his older brother. Valoin smiled, smiled at him, pulling him into a hug quickly letting go as they heard Shu's approach him from the other side of the room. Hello, you two, the person said. I take the meeting went well? The smile morphs into a grin. Isn't that great? Yes, it is great, Chia says, taking a deep breath, Valoin grabbing onto his hands. And no information spill, no? The person turned... The person paused, waiting for the nod Chia gave. Great, you two... You two are good for them to turn in for the night. The person turns on their heel and leaves the room. Chuya and Valorin depart to their rooms. The temporary p- peace. Both of them sought out this whole during this time. Okay, there you have it. So that's chapter one and chapter two of Turning Tides. Now, I bet you weren't expecting this. Chuya being the Port Mafia boss. This is amazing and I absolutely love this fic. So, make sure to take care of yourself because I am cautious of, you know, everyone not taking care of themselves, you know, the whole thing my generation does, Gen Z, yay, woo, no. 
But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time. Take care of yourself. Bye.